after Ukraine began its invasion of Russia's Kursk region, the number of confirmed Ukrainian brigades in and around the invasion zone has grown to at least five. Four army mechanized brigades and one brigade from the Independent Attack Aviation Force. According to Forbes, in total, these units could include up to 10,000 troops and 600 armored vehicles. In four days, five brigades have partially or completely occupied about 400 square miles of the Kursk region and captured dozens of Russian troops. The brigades may not be staying in Russia, but there are currently no signs that they are slowing down their attacks, Forbes writes. As the article recalls in the first hours of the Ukrainian offensive, the direct participation of three brigades was confirmed, the 22nd and 88th mechanized brigades, as well as the 80th Airborne Assault Brigade. But on Thursday, the 116th mechanized brigade posted a video taken by the Horn Drone Group showing the brigade's tanks and armored personnel carriers moving toward Kursk. A day later, the 61st Mechanized Brigade also made its presence known in the video from the Russian town of Sudza. Additionally, the 49th Artillery Brigade is about 30 miles from the site of the Battle of Kursk. Also in the area is the 27th Artillery Brigade, which is the only HIMARS operator, Forbes notes. On Friday, for example, a video was released showing a HIMARS attacking a column of Russian troops moving toward Kursk. Pictures taken after the attack showed seven destroyed trucks and many dead soldiers. The shelling helps explain how the Ukrainians were able to advance so far and so quickly. The artillery appears to be preventing fresh Russian troops from reaching the battlefield, Forbes notes. At the same time, the article emphasizes that the artillery blockade reduces one of the main dangers for the Ukrainian operation, the risk that Russia will isolate Ukrainian units. But the Russians can't isolate the Ukrainians unless they can break through Ukrainian artillery to attack the supply lines of the main Ukrainian forces. And every day of delay cements the Ukrainians' gains as more units arrive in Kursk, Forbes notes. Fierce fighting continues in the Kursk region of Russia. Ukrainian telegram channels are publishing videos of Russian soldiers surrendering. The process of capturing Russian prisoners from the border covering group near the Sudza checkpoint, the work of the 80th Separate Airborne Assault Brigade and the Naktigal Battalion of the 14th Separate Air Force Regiment, commented on the Ukrainian public channel Nikolaevsky Vanek on the related video. U a wire media outlet says that the Ukrainian state project for locating Russian soldiers Hotu Neti noted that the captives include conscripts, mobilized troops and contract soldiers. There is also information about the deceased, whose bodies were not retrieved by their comrades during the retreat, stated the project. According to the Russian news outlet Astra, drone footage of the captives shows them in the area of the village of Gogolevka, near the Ukrainian border. Russian Z bloggers report that Ukrainian forces have entered at least two administrative centers. The two majors, Telegram Channel, states that There were battles around the Sudza checkpoint throughout the night. In the morning, the border guards called artillery fire on themselves. They have not been heard from since, indicated the Z public channel. Videos of a captured Russian conscript from the Kursk region have also surfaced. I was taken prisoner by Ukrainian forces while crossing the border, says one soldier. When asked about command, he answered, they abandoned us. If we die, we die. Reports also suggest that Ukrainian forces broke through two lines of defense in the Kursk region within 20 hours. Russia spent $150 million over 2.5 years building these fortifications. Close to this checkpoint is the Sudza gas pumping station, previously captured by Ukrainian forces. This station is the only route for gas supplies to Europe. The Russian general staff claims that the advance of Ukrainian troops has been halted. Kyiv has yet to comment on the situation. At the Russian airfield Lipetsk, two hit by Ukrainian drones, warehouses containing more than 700 guided aerial bombs are detonated. Informed sources told Union correspondent about this. In particular, last night the Security Service of Ukraine in cooperation with the Armed Forces of Ukraine and the Special Operations Forces carried out an explosive strike on the Russian military airfield Lipetsk, two. According to sources, The airfield housed several dozen fighter jets, helicopters, and warehouses where more than 700 guided bombs were stored. At the same time, after the Ukrainian drone strike, a powerful explosion occurred, 
which caused a chain detonation and a large-scale fire on a significant part of the airfield. Local authorities confirmed the fact of the detonation and announced the evacuation of residents of nearby settlements. As sources note, most of the aircraft stationed at the Lipetsk, two military airfield did not manage to take off. The Security Service of Ukraine, in cooperation with the Defense Forces, continues methodical work to destroy Russian aviation logistics so that the enemy does not have the opportunity to bomb Ukrainian cities with KABs. In early August, we cleared the Morozovsk airfield of KABs and fighters, and today it is Lipetsk 2's turn. We continue working, said an informed source in the security service of Ukraine.